In this video, I want to look at another interesting idea from the tipping point. Malcolm Gladwell tells us about a research project that took place in the USA some years ago in which a man tried to get a parcel to a specific named person somewhere else in the country. But he didn't do it by posting it directly to them. Instead, he gave the parcel to someone he thought was most likely to be able to get it to them by passing it on to someone else. And then they, in turn, should pass it on to someone else. What the researcher wanted to know was how many connections does it take to get the package to a random person anywhere in the world? So this is an interesting question. Let's have a think about it for a second. Imagine you had a letter that you wanted to get one of the people I'll list in a second. Who could you give it to so that it moves one step closer? So the person you give it to should be someone you know. So what about getting the letter to the Pope? Who would you give it to in order to get it one step closer to the Pope? Remember, you can't post it directly. What about the President of the United States? Or a teacher in Yorkshire, England? An Imam in Islamabad? The Queen? A fisherman in St Lucia? Or what about the head gardener at the Botanic Gardens in Singapore? So, for example, if you wanted to get a letter hand-delivered to the Pope, you might give it to your local Catholic priest, if you know your local Catholic priest. Or you might give it to a Catholic friend. Now, if you don't live anywhere where there are Catholics, perhaps you can give it to your, let's say, rabbi or imam, or to a Jewish or Muslim friend to pass on to their rabbi or imam. And then that person passes it on to someone they know who can pass it on. So this is all getting a bit complicated, but let's see if you can follow this. So if you give the letter to your local Catholic priest, they might pass it to their bishop, and the bishop passes it to their archbishop, who passes it to their cardinal, who passes it to the pope. That's five steps. If you started by giving it to a Catholic friend first, well, that's six steps. So either way, it took you five or six steps to get the letter to the pope. So what is the magic number? Well, the researcher found out that the magic number is six. This is the most number of steps it takes to get uh, a letter, a package, a message from one person to any other person in the world. That's his claim. Six steps or six degrees of separation. So why is this important? Well, I think it makes you realise how easy it is to get in touch with people who can help you. So do you need help finding finance for your project? You might not know someone who can help you, but you know someone who knows someone, and so on. So let's say you're developing a project that helps people grow plants in arid conditions and you'd like some advice on what types of plant work best. So you could look it up online, or you could contact the head gardener at the Botanic Gardens in Singapore, or in Cambridge, or anywhere in the world. Now, of course, they might be very busy, and you might think, well, why would they help me? One of the key points about the six degrees of separation is that rather than cold calling strangers, you receive some form of introduction. So if you want to ask an expert about something, ask a mutual acquaintance to connect you. So this core idea is important. You basically know everyone in the world 
through your own circle of friends and family. So never say you don't know who to speak to about something. And as a participant in Queen's Young Leaders, you have a bit of a head start because you're automatically plugged in to one of the biggest networks in the world, the Commonwealth. But you do already have a few useful first connections, your friends, your family, and your and their acquaintances. Now in her book, The Art of Asking, Amanda Palmer discusses the example of author Henry David Thoreau, who is uh, celebrated as something of a loner genius who isolated himself in a cabin by a lake to write his masterpiece, Walden. And he lived a life of self-reliance. But Amanda Palmer points out in her book, Thoreau wrote in painstaking detail about how he chose to remove himself from society to live by his own means in a little 10 foot by 15 foot hand hewn cabin on the side of a pond. What he left out of Walden though was the fact that the land he built on was borrowed from his wealthy neighbour, that his pal Rafe Waldo Emerson had him over for dinner all the time and that every Sunday Thoreau's mother and sister brought over a basket of freshly baked goods for him, including donuts. The idea of Thoreau gazing thoughtfully over the expanse of transcendental Walden Pond, a bluebird alighting on his threadbare shoe, all the while eating donuts that his mum brought him, just doesn't jibe with most people's picture of him as a self-reliant, noble, marrow-sucking, back-to-the-woods folk hero. From this, Amanda Palmer coins the phrase, take the donuts. What she's saying is, don't be self-reliant. Make use of the people around you and the people around them who are able to give you a helping hand simply because they can. So think about the example of the botanist earlier. It isn't a huge demand to ask someone if they'll pass a message on to somebody else or introduce you. In the experiment with the packages, people had to physically carry a package to someone or pay for it to be posted. Imagine that same experiment conducted today using email, Twitter or Facebook. You're probably even more closely linked to everybody else in the world than six degrees of separation. Amanda Palmer continues in her book. Taking the donuts is hard for a lot of people. Maybe it comes back to that same old issue. We just can't see what we do as important enough to merit the help, the love. So that's the end of week one. And what I think we've covered in this, most, in this video is the idea that you are connected to lots of other people. And that level of connection is a valuable asset for you. You need to be able to start thinking, well, who can I ask to help me? And the Amanda Palmer extract is about overcoming that reluctance, that, that feeling that you might have that what you're doing isn't important enough or that you're too shy to ask somebody to help you and they may reject you, they may turn you down. But as Amanda Palmer says, you need to learn to take the donuts. In week two, we'll look at the idea of nature and nurture and ask why we're the people that we are. But for now, go to the activities for this section on your circle of influence. And I'll see you next week.